subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscribe button. Click the bell button and enjoy the latest uploads from our channel. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful. This whole area is called the Temple Mount. This is the Temple Mount. The temple was a building seven stories high, stood on top of this Temple Mount, on top of that flat area where those trees are. In 20 BC, King Herod the Great built a temple where Jews could worship their God. It was designed to last forever. Herod says, we're going to create the most spectacular physical structure in the entire Middle East, maybe in the entire world. You can see these gigantic stones at the bottom. Those are called Herodian stones. The Jewish temple to the one God stood on top of that mount before there was Islam or Christianity. But in the year 70 AD, the Romans sacked Jerusalem and demolished the temple. In the centuries since, Jews have come to pray at its remains, the Western or Wailing Wall. It was almost 1900 years before the site returned to direct Jewish control in 1967. We are about 70 years into the new Israel. Why hasn't the temple been rebuilt? Two reasons. One is because the Jews aren't ready. And the other is because the Muslims aren't ready. The state of Israel militarily, politically controls this whole area. But the state of Israel gave the Temple Mount area on the top to the Muslims. While the top of the mount is off limits to Jewish religious rites, there are sacred spaces underground, which Yoram says will help me understand the Jewish vision for end times. This is it. We've come to the closest that a human being can come to the Holy of Holies, the most sacred spot in the world. That's the room in the temple that one human being would enter once a year, the high priest on Yom Kippur, on the holiest day of the year, and he would say God's name. Orthodox Jews believe that without this temple, their religious rites are incomplete. So they await the day when their temple is rebuilt. Is there a Messiah? In Judaism? In Judaism? Jews invented the Messiah. But it's not the same Messiah that most people think about. Okay. Because right? when Christians think of the Messiah, they think of someone who's divine. Yeah. They think of, you know, the end of days. What we have for the Messiah is a man, a king of this earth, who's going to bring peace among the nations in this world. And he will not be divine. He will not be divine. And, Yoren tells me, this mortal messiah has a very specific to-do list. According to Jewish tradition, he has three things he's supposed to do. Number one, he's going to reconstitute the Jewish kingdom or the Jewish state. Number two, he's going to bring peace with the neighbors. And number three, he's going to rebuild that rebuild temple. The temple. Here we are. This is 2015. What are you going to do now? What is contemporary Jewish position on the temple? The Jews think of the world in terms of this dream that once existed in the world, that was taken away. The Jews want to bring back into the world. That is the reconstruction of the temple. The reconstruction of the temple as the, the, the crowning symbol of this era of justice and peace that we're supposed to be assisting to bring back into the world. Judaism is just one of many religions that envisions the coming of world peace one day. But looking at this place, where so many religions intersect, it's hard to imagine peace coming. If the Antichrist is to successfully impersonate the true Messiah, it follows that he also must attempt to rule the world from Jerusalem with what would appear to be eternal rule. 
Only then can he declare, I am the Messiah. If he is to do that and convince the Jews that he is indeed the Messiah, then it follows logically. Number one, he would have to liberate the Holy Land for the Jews. Number two, he would have to bring them back to the Holy Land to reclaim it as their own. Number three, he would have to restore a state of Israel in the Holy Land and get them to believe that this is the Holy Israel of David and of Solomon Of course it would not be, it would be an imposter. Then they would be convinced and finally he would have to cause that state of Israel to become the ruling state in the world. Only then would he be able to rule the world from Jerusalem. Then he can get up and say, I am the Messiah. And they would believe that he is indeed the Messiah. And then he could rub his hands and he can say, mission accomplished. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala eventually allowed them to enter into the Holy Land after 40 years. And Dawood alayhi salam establishes the state of Israel, the first Islamic state. And establishes Jerusalem as the capital of the first Islamic state. And he is succeeded by his son Suleiman, Nabi Suleiman alayhi salam. And he builds the masjid in the capital city of the Islamic State. And when you read the story in the Quran of Suleiman alayhi salam and the Queen of Sheba, read between the lines and you will see in that story the recognition of the State of Israel as the ruling state in the world. And the definition of a ruling state is that it can impose its will on any rival. And so this is the golden age, the golden age of Banu Israel, the time of Nabi Dawood alayhi salam and Nabi Suleiman alayhi salam. But after the death of Suleiman alayhi salam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had prohibited riba in the Torah. They changed the Torah. They rewrote it. The Torah now says, you can find it, go look in it, you'll find it, it's still there. It is haram for a Jew to lend money on interest to another Jew. Rabbi, can you tell me why? Answer, don't rip off your own brother. That's why. It is haram for a Jew to lend money on interest to another Jew. But it is halal, he can lend money on interest to those who are not Jews. It's called double standards. Because of this change they've made in the Torah concerning riba, among other things, they have now violated the condition of righteous conduct. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responds to this. In Surah to Bani Israel, he refers to this as fasad. Fasad is corruption. This is the corruption of the word of Allah. وَقَدَيْنَا إِلَىٰ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ فِي الْكِتَابِ فِي الْكِتَابِ لَتُفْسِدُنَّ فِي الْأَرْضِ مَرَّتَيْنِ وَلَتَعَلُنَّ عُلُوًا كَبِيرًا That we recorded it in the Torah in the Zabur in the Torah that Banu Israel will commit fasad in the land yani al-ardul muqaddasa in the holy land 
on two occasions. This is the first one. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responded to it by sending an army from Babylon. An army that worshipped the sun and the moon and the stars and idols. So these ibad are sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they destroy the state of Israel and they destroy the masjid and they take Banu Israel into slavery in Babylon and so now they are weeping by the rivers of Babylon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends a prophet Isaiah he sends many other prophets but this one in particular to communicate a divine promise what is the promise we were told about a divine promise which was communicated to the Israelite people that Allah was going to send a prophet who would be known as Al-Masih, the Messiah and who would rule the world with justice confirmed by Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam he would be Hakimun Adil he would rule the world with justice from the throne of Nabi Dawood alayhi salam the Prophet David and with a rule which would be eternal but when that promise was communicated the Israelites were out there in Babylon and the Holy Land was occupied. The Israelite people understood that if the Messiah was to fulfill this divine promise there were certain logical implications which followed number one that he would have to liberate the holy land number two that he would have to bring the believers back to the holy land to reclaim it as their own number three that he would have to restore the holy state of israel founded by david and solomon allah's blessings be upon them and number four, that this holy state of Israel would have to become once again the ruling state in the world. And then the Messiah could rule the world from the throne of David alayhi salam with a rule which would be eternal. After almost a hundred years in Babylon suddenly things began to happen and the Holy Land was liberated the Persian Empire defeated Babylon and the Israelite people were allowed to return to the Holy Land to reclaim it as their own and to restore the Holy State of Israel and the temple or the masjid built by Solomon alayhi salam was rebuilt and so the Israelite people are now excited the excitement has reached fever pitch the Messiah must be around the corner the golden age is coming back we're going to rule the world one more time and sure enough the Messiah came but when the Messiah arrived the son of Mary while some of them accepted him the young ones the poor the humble the innocent the establishment the rabbis the priests rejected him 
why did they reject the Messiah? Answer, because Allah tested them. And because they were seeing with only one eye, they failed the test. They said, they said that his mother had committed that enormous sin. And they said that this baby was a bastard. If they had seen with two eyes, with the internal eye, then they would have known, oh no, appearance and reality were completely opposite to each other with this baby. That she, she was still a virgin she gave birth to the baby but they did not see with the internal eye prophet muhammad allah's blessings be upon him then informed that allah had created a being And Allah had committed to that being the mission of impersonating the Messiah. Pretending that he is the Messiah. So he is the great pretender. And that he is known as Dajjal. Al-Masih al-Dajjal Dajjal the false messiah or the antichrist Dajjal means one who deceives and so the antichrist has a PhD in deception in everything connected with the antichrist appearance and reality are opposite to each other. 